Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, thank you for your prayers. I'm continuing to get better slowly, but it's happening. And so I'm very grateful. Well, some of you have written in and said to me, well, I should actually say quite a few of you have written in and said to me, you've got to listen to Rosemary Bruce. You know, she's looking after you. Some of you have written directly to Rosemary and said, you know, thank you for looking after Bruce. And it's given me great cause and pause to think about how Rosemary has looked after me because normally I'm uh, capable like so many of us are. And then all of a sudden when you become incapacitated in some way, either weak or tired or, or the medication that I've been taking makes you very drowsy and all of a sudden you, you've, you're alive and in the next few minutes you're pretty groggy and sleepy. And Rosemary has been looking after me and she has been fantastic. Well, in the scriptures, there's a place where Rosemary and what she's done has been described. And, it can't, and, and looking after someone in a time of weakness is not an option, the scripture tells us. The scripture tells us it's our obligation. And whilst it wasn't just out of Rosemary's love that she's looked after me, Rosemary's looked after me because this is the way the Lord ordains that she does. Rosemary has done it wonderfully, and I am just so grateful to her for all that she's done. Have a look at this. In, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, Jesus is talking about judgment, and he's talking about the kingdom to come. And he says this, When the Son of Man, that is Jesus, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he'll sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he'll separate people one from another. Uh, as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats and he'll put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. And then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you a dr uh, something to drink? And when was it that you, we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me again. And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Jesus is telling this parable about what our obligations are and how we will face, in a sense, judgment when we face God face to face. And he says, so how did you live and how did you give your life? And, and, and people will say, Lord, we, we didn't see you physically in front of us. And when we did these things, you weren't about us. But yet you're saying that we did it to you. How? And Jesus will come along and say, to the degree you did this, to even the least, you did it to me. You did it to me. And that's what we're called to, aren't we? And so, yes, we may have compassion and gifts of empathy, of which certainly Rosemary has abundance. And we may go those go to all the effort that we do that Rosemary has. She's cared for me. She's driven me places. She's made sure I... Uh, if, if she's made sure I've been okay. Even in the midst of this past week, I've still had a couple of things that I've had to do where I've had to give talks and, 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 and standing up and haven't been the strongest to do that. Rosemary's been concerned for me if I've been okay whilst I've been doing it. And she's looked after me tremendously well. But she hasn't just done it because she loves me. And she hasn't done it just because she's kind. She's done it for this reason. It's the way we Christian people are called to live. We're called to pour our life out like Jesus did, 
and, and to give our life away to care for the poor, the weak, the hidden and the hurting. And that's what Rosemary has done today. So yes, she's walked the extra miles and she's been fantastic. But she's also done it because she is a Christian person and, and Christ expects us to care for him the way we care for the needy. Some years ago in the ministry, we did uh, an event where we look, we cared for people who were living on the street. And I still remember Rosemary telling a story about one particular old man who came and, and they had people who were cutting their hair and they had people who were helping them with their health and they had people that were helping them with, with just even putting moisture on their hands, people who were helping uh, some of these people who lived on the streets for a long time cutting their nails. And I remember, wrote, and I remember Rosemary telling the story of one old man who lived on the street and, and his hands were very cracked and his hands were very dry and Rosemary told the story of putting moisturiser on his hands, knowing that we couldn't solve his problems, but, but, but Rosemary was able to do that for him. And as she did that for him, she was Jesus. And so whether you've got a husband in need or a wife in need or a child in need, if you're the parent, uh, parent or a person who's responsible for someone with special needs, if you're a carer in some way, know this, the Lord sees your effort. And as you do it, you're doing it to Jesus. And as you are Jesus to someone by your love and care, you are also doing it to Jesus who's in that person and it's required of us. It's what it is to be Christian, to be a life fully surrendered to him, is to care. Where today do you need to maybe change your attitude a little bit? Where, where you don't stop and go, well, this is chore, and it is. But rather you see yourself as Jesus. And you see yourself ministering to Jesus we would be different because one day God is going to come to us and he's going to say to you, how did you love me? And it's going to be for that child who's, who, who you put up with who was maybe troublesome, for that baby who was really unsettled when they were first born, for that husband who loses his way, for that person who's poor, for that person who needs encouragement. You're but being Jesus. Where, where could you do that today to someone that you love? Where is it in your family today as they come home from work or you could bring something home from work to say, I love you, I care for you, whether it was to buy a bunch of flowers, to make a meal, to give a gift, or to just even give a hug and a, and a kiss and to say, I love you. That's what the gospel is about. It's a, that's what we're called to do. And I encourage you today to go love someone and to see them as Jesus. Loving Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise because you're good. And Lord God, allow us to be transformed and allow us to see you in all whom we serve. And I thank you for Rosemary and how she's looked after me in these days. And I give you thanks and I give you praise in Jesus' name. And Father, we make this prayer in your precious name. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. And don't forget wherever you are, God's never, ever far from you.